it's the end of July now and I thought that it would be a good idea to do a review of how my stores are changing. So I have my Shopify store which I started in March last year, so March 2023. I didn't get any sales at all in 2023 and then suddenly in January this year I had my first sale and since then things have continued to improve. I wanted to do um, a comparison between Etsy and Shopify. I keep most of my products on Shopify now and I leave all the haberdashery items and then sometimes I'll throw in a few extras like some coasters or a couple of dresses just to see how things are changing onto my Etsy store. And I wanted to do a comparison for traffic. So through Shopify, I get found on the internet. So Google Shopping, all that sort of thing. On Etsy, you are allowed to include your website address. I don't know if anyone has migrated from Etsy and decided to buy something off my Shopify. Um, and I wanted to have a look and see how the two sites are doing. So, my income on Shopify is slightly higher this year than my Etsy store. And the fees difference is considerable. So, I made, I made 12 sales on Etsy, which comprised 16 items, because... Um, people will group might buy more than one thing at once so let's say 16 items I bought on Etsy the fees for that came to a hundred and seven pounds and sixty pence and so far this year on Etsy I have made a hundred and seventy two pounds forty five and that's mostly selling things like the old coaster buttons, fabric, because I mostly run it as a haberdashery store these days. On my Shopify, I have sold slightly more. I have sold 17 items, some of which are grouped into more than uh, several items in one order. Or one order. I've made £188.07, and, and my fees were only £8.74. Shopify doesn't charge much in fees, if people decide, um, rather than using Shopify payments, which goes through a credit card um, and uses the PayPal version, PayPal will charge me an additional fee. So that's all grouped in with that. However, on Shopify, I pay a monthly subscription. In January, I bought a one-year subscription for Shopify because they were offering a discount. And I think the discount worked out as something like three free months, which was great. So for me, for the whole of 2024, that equals about £17.16 per month. So on top of that £8.74, I need to add £120.51 for January to July. So that means that selling through Shopify costs me more and it costs me more by about £20. So although my Shopify traffic is getting better and I've got slightly more orders in, it is costing me more money to list there. Now I keep all the higher price items on my Shopify, so all the dresses, all the outfits, all the jewellery, all that sort of thing. So it's harder to get traction with those higher end items when we are still in an economic crisis, and I understand that. Um, selling online full stop is, isn't as cheap as it used to be. I have looked at how much money I have spent on fees in all their types so far um, so that's um, my Shopify, my Etsy, PayPal, um, YouTube, uh, Coffee, which is the donation site and 
if I include if I don't include my Shopify subscription, that's 173 pounds and 63 pence alone I've spent just on fees, just to be present online and to make sales. So this is why I am doing things carefully. It's why I have other side hustles which are filling all the gaps. These things take time. I read somewhere last year that it takes about eight months to make your first sale on Shopify. For me it took nine and it's good to have the traction. I am seeing some interesting things in my analytics on Shopify. Uh, a lot of my traffic to my shop comes from YouTube and I'm not very good at marketing, I'm not very good at advertising myself, but I have found a way to do that by letting it happen naturally. So I have my YouTube business channel, which isn't a hard sales channel, it's a behind the scenes, it's telling you what I'm doing, what I'm up to, all that sort of thing. And just by talking about it and having the link to my shop in the show notes has gravitated traffic. Uh, I also have a personal YouTube channel which gets a lot more traction and has been monetized. And some of the people who watch there are also interested in buying my stuff. So they have gravitated over um, to my Shopify store because I put all the links in the notes there as well. But also some of them have joined my business YouTube channel to find out what goes on behind the scenes. So a lot of people who are buying from me are getting a better overview of who I am as a person because on my personal channel I talk about my frugal life I, I do hiking videos all the things that are just day a day in the life of me basically and you can see who I really am and I think that helps people click with you and then they learn to understand why you do what you do as a business I never started my business to make a fortune it was because I was creative I needed a creative outlet and then it made sense to just try and turn some of that creativity into money because you can't just keep making stuff and then doing nothing with it. Um, but I never ever thought that it would end up being a full-time income or a full-time job. I've always had little side hustles and part-time jobs on the side while I've run my business, which I've had for 12 years now, and that's what enables it to survive because it means that I can dedicate enough time part-time to it and I don't have to go back to full-time work. So I have the time to do the orders. I have the time to make the things because all my other little side hustles mean I'm also working from home. So that's really advantageous with that. So it was really interesting to see those numbers. Um, my Shopify has really only been selling for seven months now since my first order. So I'm hoping that things are really going to improve. I think that because of some of the Etsy fees, I think I'm going to not list the higher price items because the fees are just huge when you sell something that's a lot more money. Um, so I'm not going to relist any of those high price items. I'm going to stick to my, my Etsy store will, will have my all the fabrics and the buttons and the zips and the bits and pieces for other crafters and I will leave the coasters on there. Um, the coasters are also on my shop and of course all the garments, all the jewellery, etc, etc and the, the handmade bags and things, they're also on there. And I think that's the best way to, um, to get that balance right and I think hopefully as I just keep talking about my business, people will find me, there will be other sales and hopefully things will go onwards and upwards. It takes time, I feel like from when I started my Shopify store, I feel like I was a new business starting again from scratch. Because it's had, my business has had so many different ways of working. I used to be predominantly a stylist, then I was predominantly doing um, dress alterations for bridal shops. Um, and then there were times when I had well-paid part-time jobs where I didn't even really need to try that hard on my business and I just let people find me. Now it's become a, if I don't do the work, nothing gets found. So I am trying to get back into it and now that I've got my creative mojo back, I feel more enthusiastic about that because I can see that people are coming 
to my shop from YouTube and other places and I can see that that is actually working. I don't want to overdo it, I don't want to become a hard sell place, I want it to happen organically, I want people to find me because I resonate with them and they understand what it is I'm talking about. So I'm going to leave it at that, I'm just going to keep going as I am, we're still in a really tough economic climate at the moment, things are not getting easier, we've just had a change of government here in the UK which means that everything's a little bit iffy, taxes will change, we've got issues with you know um, winter fuel payments that get, might be taken away and um, pensioners look like they're going to lose money in tax all sorts of things so it's a very jumpy situation at the moment in terms of finances and I don't blame people for being very careful I am as well I hope you found the information useful I've put some graphics around and some numbers up here so that you can see that and digest it in a different way if it's better for you and I, I will probably do my next report at the end of the year uh, I was going to do this one at the end of June and then just ran out of time basically so there we are end of July and I will do one either at the end of December or in early January and we'll see how the rest of 24 went Oh, I'm not going to let myself be pressurised. I have lots of other little side hustles. Money is ticking over. I'm staying on top of things, keeping my head above water. And that's the most important thing. And it's, for a lot of people, that's all you can hope for right now. So I will carry on enjoying what I do. Um, do follow me. Do have a, have a look around... Um, have a look around my website. A lot of the things that I make are giftable. Uh, bracelets, jewellery items, there's some nice little, even little small things that are, that are very affordable like friendship bracelets and little bits and pieces. So do go and have a look. You never know, birthday's coming up, you've got Christmas coming up. Oh, don't mention that word. I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to mention that. But buying little amounts throughout the year can make that time of year a lot less painful and it's not worth getting into debt for. So please have a look. Thank you for watching and I'm really grateful for you all being here. This channel is very small. This is the non-monetized channel, but this channel does not need to be monetized. That's not what it's for. That's what the other channel is for. And this one is purely for me to talk about what I do behind the scenes. So I hope you enjoy that and keep following because I will be having some more making videos coming up. I'll be showcasing a few more things that are new in the shop and Onwards and upwards. Speak to you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.